In our previous tutorial, we looked at the accuracy and precision of our uh, data, the uncertainty and how close we are to the actual value. Well, we're going to learn how to use this percent error calculation today in order to be able to better describe how well we did our uh, measurements in our experiment. So we're going to be using, again, the percent error calculation. Remember, percent error is equal to measured value minus accepted value divided by your accepted value multiplied by 100 because it's a percent just like your grades are. So let's look at our um, data really quick. Over here, I have some data that I collected based on, you know, measuring of the table as we did with our string lab. So we have the length of the table according to my string was 50 inches and the width of the table was 23 just so that you'll know the dimensions that I'm talking about. Length is this way, width in my case would be that way. So I convert my inches into centimeters because at the end our more accurate piece of equipment that we use is again the metric system and it's we want it in meters eventually so I use centimeters. So I did my quick conversions, you know, that one inch is equal um, 2.54 centimeters. So my quick conversion factors gives me uh, 127 centimeters for length and 58.42 centimeters for my width. So I have these that are based on my measured, what I really did. Now, if I take a really accurate measuring device, the one that has meters already on there and centimeters and, me and re-measure the table, you're going to see that the table measures 152.4 centimeters in width and it measures 60.8 centimeters in um, width. Sorry, this one was 152.4 centimeters in length and this is 60.8 centimeters in width. So in order to figure out what the percent error is between my calculations and obviously we see there is an error because these numbers really don't match at all. We're going to use this formula over here. So I'm going to be looking at both my numbers over there and substituting them into my formula over here. And this is really the process you should use with any formulas that we're going to be using. You always start off with your equation and you have your given values. So let's uh, replace our numbers where they belong and we can do our quick calculation. I'm going to do it just for length right now. I'm going to concentrate on length. So percent error is equal to my measured value. Well, my measured value in my actual experiment was 127 centimeters. My accepted value is when you literally measure it with an actual uh, meter stick or measuring in meters is 152.4 centimeters. So we already see, like I said, a variation in our numbers. So again, we need to follow order of operations, so we would subtract those two first. Now at the bottom we have our accepted value. Well, our accepted value would be this one, which is measured with the correct measuring device. So 152.4 centimeters. And at the end, all of this will be multiplied by 100. So, if I do the math, you're going to see that the top value is actually a negative value because this is smaller than that one. So, on the top here, I would end up with negative, uh, I believe it's 25.4 centimeters, divided by this value right here, which is 152.4 centimeters times 100. So as I keep on doing my steps, once I divide these two, I end up with 0.6166 repeated times 100. And at the end, my percent error is 16, and I'm just going to round up 0.7%. That tells me that my measured values compared to the actual value is 16.7% incorrect. Now, this top number, remember, was negative. That negative here tells me it was below the actual number. If it's positive, then your number's too big. In this case, my value is too small. So we can actually give um, a statement saying that my data is 16.7% incorrect. 
And if this were to translate into grades, we would end up end up with a say an eighty three point eighty three point three would be our grade if we were talking about an actual um, grade for a class. If you're seven sixteen point seven percent incorrect, you would end up somewhere with an eighty three. So that's how close we are. We have a B for this type of result. Now again, in this particular lab that we use that string ruler. Um, we had in, inaccuracies and uncertainty in our values because our string was not very accurate. Obviously it's not because, you know, it's kind of cut and the knots are not very exact and perfect. So we would state that within our conclusion that our limit to this value or why we ended up so wrong with that high percentage is because our inaccuracy in the equipment really played a role in here. Now, another reason why you may have inaccuracies is because your calculations were off when you converted. But we'll deal with those later. My, the bigger idea behind this is that our percent error at the end has to be part of our conclusion. In order for us to have valid results and valid conclusions, we need to include percent error in whatever it is that we're trying to um, conclude.